Hey guys, my name is Tom and welcome back to another devlog. In this one, I upgraded the project to Unity 2019.3 and switched from the built-in render pipeline to the universal render pipeline. I also added some post-processing effects and drastically improved rendering performance, so stick around until the end for that. It's nearly 6 o'clock right now and I just finished fully implementing the new interpolation system and I've gotten rid of all the old code. The only thing that still looks choppy is raising and lowering the sail, but I'm going to leave that as it is for now since its scale changes instead of its position or rotation like everything else. I've got to be honest, I'm really pleased with how everything looks now. I don't think I actually realized how much I hated the choppy movement until it was gone. The cannons in particular, it just feels so much better being able to aim smoothly. Alright, so unfortunately I was kind of sick for most of last week, so I didn't actually make too much progress on the project. The only thing I really did was put together the next part of the tutorial series. Although my sore throat has transitioned to a bit of a cough, which can make it hard to fall asleep, I'm feeling a lot better now. On a much more exciting note, Unity 2019.3 finally came out of beta the other day. I'm going on a small trip this weekend, which means I need to get this devlog edited and uploaded on Thursday, so that leaves me today, tomorrow and Wednesday to make some good progress. With just 3 days, I don't think it makes sense to jump into learning about event systems and compartmentalizing the world, so I'm going to switch to Unity 2019.3 during this time. Along with that, I'm going to start using the Universal Render Pipeline instead of the built-in one, so I'll have to adapt all of my shaders to work with that. I'm hoping to make the switch within about 2 days, which would then leave me with another day to play with some post-processing and to maybe look into putting together a better skybox shader. So I'm about to finish up for the evening, and there's not too much progress to show. I spent quite a bit of time moving things over to the new project, and I ran into some issues with missing shader macros. The macro I was using with the built-in render pipeline held the value of pi, but after trying to find the equivalent for the universal render pipeline for quite a while, I decided to just hardcode the value in. Moving things over is a relatively tedious and unexciting process, and it's also not super interesting to talk about, so it unfortunately doesn't make for good content. I think I can finish it up tomorrow and then I can move on to post-processing which I'm actually really excited about. I've never worked with any post-processing effects myself but I've seen some videos and the difference those subtle changes can make is absolutely staggering. I've also recently been thinking about the possibility of using a single material to render the entire game which would be awesome for performance. That may not be entirely feasible since my shaders for the water and terrain require some extra features but one material for my water, one for the terrain and one for everything else should be achievable. Since I don't use textures, I should be able to get away with using vertex colors, meaning the color data would be stored within the model itself instead of it being set in the material inspector. This would allow me to use the same shader to render a variety of objects even if they're completely different and would normally require separate materials. I don't know if I'll get around to that this week, but it's definitely something I need to look into at some point in the near future. Okay, so it's 4.35 on Wednesday afternoon, and I've just finished moving everything to the 2019.3 project. There wasn't too much to talk about yesterday, since I really just continued moving files over, but that's all finished now. It's quite likely that I overlooked a few things, but those should become obvious over the next few days. I did run into one issue though. Previously, I was able to use very few materials while still being able to use a wide range of colors by taking advantage of material property blocks. This worked fine, but I haven't added support for that functionality to my new URP shaders. Since I'm lazy and don't want to do more work than necessary, I'm going to make an attempt at using vertex colors to keep my material count low. As I mentioned on Monday, this should theoretically also keep my batch count much lower, which is awesome for performance. Originally, I was going to look into this at some point in the future, but it would completely remove my need for material property blocks, so I don't want to add support for those in my shaders if I won't need it in a few weeks. It's 8.30 now, and I finally have the new color method working. It actually wasn't that hard to get my shaders to use the model's vertex colors, however the colors I was setting in the inspector were apparently in the wrong color space, which resulted in everything looking like it was missing saturation. This had me stumped for a solid hour, but I finally found a post on the Unity forums where someone had a similar issue, and the solution ended up being as simple as adding a single line of code. I now have just three materials for the entire ship, and that's only because I want some things to be shinier than others. More specifically, metallic objects like the cannons should gleam more than cloth or wood, which requires setting certain properties besides just colors. Theoretically, I could store the smoothness value in the alpha channel, but that still leaves me without a place to put the metallic value. 
Anyways, by doing this, I've managed to drastically reduce my set pass calls. Set pass calls are the most expensive part of the rendering process because that's when things are set up to render an object's shader. That means that the more materials you have in your scene, the more set pass calls you'll probably have. Obviously, there's other factors that affect the amount of set pass calls you end up with. The amount of passes that the shaders have, in other words, how often a shader needs to render each object, as well as whether or not objects are being batched, all affects how many set pass calls your game will need. In the old Unity project, I was sitting at nearly 400 set pass calls with three ships in the scene. In the new project with the universal render pipeline, that number has dropped to a measly 23. I consider that a huge win. I also suspect that taking advantage of vertex colors and having just three materials responsible for rendering almost all objects will scale much better. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten around to any post-processing yet, but I do really want to play around with that before I end this devlog, so I'll try to squeeze that in tomorrow morning before I start editing the video. It's currently 2.40pm and I spent most of the morning cleaning up a few things I'd overlooked while upgrading the project. As far as I can tell everything is working properly now except for a minor shader issue. For some reason when I check a box on one of my shaders which is supposed to enable a certain keyword, it does so except if I click away and then click back on that material, the inspector no longer has the box checked and the keyword isn't enabled anymore. I'm not sure what's going on here especially considering that this worked perfectly fine in the old project but I don't have time to solve that in this devlog. I also played around with some post-processing, although if I'm honest the difference is a bit underwhelming. I guess I was expecting a more noticeable upgrade where everything suddenly looks 10 times better than before, but that didn't happen. The bloom effect is probably the most noticeable, particularly on the horizon. Personally, I don't think the horizon should be glowing that much, but that's something I'll probably have to address when I write a proper skybox shader. I also found out that the universal render pipeline has no built-in ambient occlusion effect at this point in time, which is pretty disappointing. I'm not sure if that's something that's being worked on, but if not, I might have to look into writing such an effect myself. I have no idea how difficult that might be, but it would certainly be an interesting experience. Anyways, I really need to get to work on editing this video since I'm leaving tomorrow, so I'm going to leave it here for this devlog. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to smash the like button and let me know what you think and any suggestions you have down below. Comments really help my videos out with the YouTube algorithm and I appreciate and respond to every single one. If you'd like to join me on the rest of this development journey, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you never miss an upload. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it and I'll see you again next time.